Allow me to start with uh, an admission, a confession if you like. I have never supervised a dissertation by publication. Uh, the, the, the vast majority of my experience, not all, but the vast, the largest part of it, is in the UK. And in all of my time working in UK universities, I only know of two cases of people who submitted by publication. One of them was an ex-diplomat and an international lawyer who published something like two dozen articles in high-profile journals and three books of legal philosophy published by Oxford University Press. Uh, he had also been the chief negotiator for the UK for the Law of the Sea Treaty. I think the biggest problem they had was finding someone who was capable of assessing his work. So it's very, very unusual in that part of the world. However, in at least one Scandinavian country I know, it's quite common. It's the standard. And in the United States, for example, it's quite common in, uh, in scientific subjects. So, A, my, my experience, I have no experience, direct experience of doing this. And uh, I have to say, in all honesty, my, my bias, if you like, is toward a PhD by, by dissertation. However, there is allowance to do that in this institution. It is a perfectly legitimate way of, of, of completing a doctorate. Uh, the regulations guiding it are, are, are published and online. And I, 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 I don't have a principled objection to it at all. I think, however, that doing it by, by research is safer, it's less risky, and I think in many ways, if, you're, if you have ambitions to be a scholar, I think it's actually better preparation for a scholarly life. I do think that publication, or, uh, dissertation by publications is particularly well suited for scientific subjects, where hypotheses are much more direct where they don't require the kind of act of creation I've been trying to take you through. But because there is an allowance here, I'd like to take you through it. I am, I am in no way at all trying to discourage you from doing this. Um, however, I want to point out what I regard as some of the pitfalls. Now, what I've told you at the beginning and, and subsequently is that part of being a professional entails you, you finding your feet administratively. You need to find all the regulations uh, that ground your particular degree, what's required of you. It's not something you can expect your supervisor to give you. You have to know the form you need to submit your research proposal in, the date by which you must do it, the research ethics committee submission, the whole lot. Knowing what's required of you is just part of being a professional. And if you are either engaged in or are about to start or are considering doing a PhD by submissions, the, the documentation is online. It's very clear and it's very thorough. In fact, it's, it's, I, I found it quite enlightening, really, because, because I've never been through the procedure myself. So I, I do recommend that you, you do that. Okay. Let's have a look at the next. Okay, and it says, it says here that you um, note that the similarities with the challenges of conducting one by research are, are, are greater than the differences. In other words, because it's a PhD, the similarities between the two pathways are, are pretty profound. And the, the, if you look, these, these are taken directly from the, from the university guidelines or the college lines. You need an introduction, an aim, a rationale, a literature review, the research design. Now, this research design is extra because it is, it is a, bit, a bit odd. You're not having a, 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 a sequence of chapters following a single argument. You've got, you've got a number of complementary articles. So the, the research design is, is in some ways part of the rationale, more than it would be for a, a dissertation. The published articles, it should be a minimum, a minimum of three interrelated articles and totaling approximately 40,000 words and then a conclusion and a general discussion of bibliography. So the concern here is to ensure not only that you have a bulk of research but that it actually is coherent, that it makes 
it makes a contribution to knowledge both in the in the individual steps in the individual articles but by dint of what it contributes as a whole but I think however good you are or perhaps even experienced you are writing articles organizing that so that it's coherent is a challenge and there's another one that, 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 that comes up right away but I'll, I'll come back to that let's see how this maps out onto our, our famous two triangles framework again remember that the two triangles isn't a blueprint, it's a, it's a framework to help you organize your thought. So you, you've seen the requirements, so let's see how it would look. So that's, the, that's basically the list that the, 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 the college regulations specify. And it's pretty much, pretty much, at least in terms of the logic and the progression, as it would be for dissertation. However, you notice that the, the, um, in, in the way I've mapped it out here, the literature review is confined to a chapter. There would be nothing to stop you having, having uh, uh, two, two chapters as literature review. There'd be nothing to stop you doing it. Or you could make it very long in the other two chapters, chapters one and three, relatively short. What matters here is the logic of it, the sequence of it. So that by the time you get past chapter three, you're, you're, you're ready to, to, to enter the hypothesis or enter the, the, the concentration. And then articles one, two, three, then the general discussion, etc., etc. But let me take you back to this, the, the requirements. Just back a step. Uh, mm, 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 back two steps. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. Point C. The published articles, a minimum, a minimum of three interrelated articles which are published, totaling approximately 40,000 words. In the professional literature, the stuff that I've published in, the standard article length is somewhere between seven and 9,000 words. Call it 8,000. There are journals which are longer, and depending on on what the discipline is or what the focus is. There are some journals that, 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 that go into, say, 10,000 words. If you're expected to be in the neighborhood of 40,000 words, I would imagine you're looking at a minimum of four articles and perhaps five. Now, I don't know how, how much allowance there is for this, this word length, but it is specified. Approximately 40,000 doesn't mean 20,000. You might get away with 32. But on the standard length, that would be four articles. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm going to come back to that problem a bit later. Okay, so we've mapped it out onto a standard. Uh, now, everything you see here in this slide these are the official criteria. These are, I've, 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 I've cut and pasted directly from the requirements, the college requirements, including the bold. The bold's original. Does it contain a comprehensive and critical literature review? Okay, sure. Uh, both, both pathways to the degree require that. That's straightforward. You know, and, and most articles, most articles in the professional literature They'll, they'll refer to, to, to some aspects of the literature, but it's not thoroughgoing. There's an assumption, if you're reading the professional literature, that you've... It worked out okay. But it's a, it's a very, very nice opportunity for a kind of mentorship that you don't get by the, by the common route. And as I, as I mentioned to you before, not everybody is able, after they've submitted a dissertation by research, to mine it for articles. Usually two things happen after a successful examination of a, of a dissertation. The external examiner will say, you should think about publishing this as a book. You'll have, to, you'll have to rewrite chapters one and two. You'll have to take all that theoretical stuff out. But there's a good book in here. Think about that. Or, more commonly, they'll say, there are at least two good articles in here, and you should publish these as articles. Um, and, 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 but not every dissertation lends itself like that. I didn't get any articles out of mine simply because of the way it was structured. 
it was highly narrative, it was historical. He was making a political point by examining a lot of history. And so um, and I, I wasn't a trained historian and I didn't, feel, I didn't feel that any of them were particularly novel as, as individual bits. And that was okay. But with this, you really do get a, a, a head start on an academic career. If you were applying for a job and you were to say, and I published in A, B, and C, that, that can stand you in good stead. It can. Um, strong supervisory uh, review is it's not a guarantee, but it's a good hedge against, against having your article rejected. You know, those of us who've had articles rejected or subject to irrational review uh, I you know, have learned over the years how to, how to preempt problems. Well, I kid you not. Sometimes I've read their, I've read negative reviews and thought, have you even read this? Do you do you really? You spend how long? And it exasperates me that editors won't stand up to their reviewers. I suppose they don't want to lose them as part of their boards. But I thought, come on, man, you're an editor. Show some spine. The nice thing is, it, because you'll be dealing with somebody who's experienced. You'll, you'll get a pre-review, so the, most of the risk will be out of it, most of the weaknesses will, 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 be, will be covered up, so that's good. Okay. And, and you know, the, 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 the guidelines are designed to make sure that you are not disadvantaged reputationally. That is, when you finish a degree by, by publication, nobody can say, well, this is only a degree by publication. No, it's in, entirely in conformity with the regulations of this university, which are designed, as you saw by the requirements, to have the same, the same structural fundamental requirements and to come away with the same kind of intellectual weight. Both have to make a contribution to knowledge. So you needn't worry about that. And as I say, in many parts of the world, a lot of science PhDs are by publication. Um, there are countries in the world where it's the standard route not, not, in, not in my country, not in the UK, but, but are the standard route and, and, um, and there's always allowance made for it in universities, even where uh, by dissertation is the, is the standard. So you're, you're perfectly free, you're perfectly welcome to, to, to do this, but here's my advice. Look before you leap. Sometimes in life you have to leap before you look. Uh, welcome brand new PhD students, because that's what you did. I'm helping you to look now, having leapt. Don't worry, you're still in midair. Okay, look before you leap with this business, because it's a big, big decision. It's a, it's a major, it's a, it's, a, it's a strategic level decision. First order strategic level decision. Familiarize yourself with the college requirements, but that applies to all of you. Find out what's required of you. It's your, it's your degree. Nobody's going to tell you. Nobody's going to chase you. Find out. Uh, and are you familiar with the journals that are pertinent to your research? I think that would be a really useful uh, uh, thing to do. Find out what's out there. You might find that your area is, is, is actually relatively narrow. There are a few journals which would actually make it riskier. Or they're, they're at a level of abstraction or uh, that, you can't, that, they, that doesn't interest you. Or that they're data driven. I mean, there's a, there's a very, very, uh, uh, one of the high, highest rated journals in the world is a, is a, is a development journal and it's, and it's data driven, it's quants. You know, um, I'll, I'll never publish there because I don't do quantitative research. So, so find out what's out there. The narrower the field, the more abstract it is, and or the more it entails specialist knowledge that you don't have or aren't interested in acquiring, the riskier it becomes because the number of venues has shrunk. So that's important. Um, 
And what's true about people who are, who are in the majority of you, doing dissertations by, by, by research, get some dissertations by submission and read them. I think it's even more important. It's more important because I'd be fascinated to read one to see how they achieve that coherence. How they achieve, how many articles they have in there to get up to that in the neighborhood of 40,000 words. I mean, I would do it just out of pure interest, and I might. You can recommend one to me. Because it, it, is, it is a very interesting, quite a bold, substantial, and yet highly challenging way of going about it. Uh, and discuss it with your supervisor. You know, if you think, this is, this is too risky, there are too many variables, there are too many uncertainties, I'm too dependent not only on, on journal editors, but reviewers who've got 10 other better things to do than to, than to give me feedback within three months. There's, there's no disgrace in turning your back on, on doing it this way. It's not about courage, it's about practicality. It's enough that you're going to be the doctors of the philosophy of your subject. You don't have to be the kind of philosopher who doesn't worry about eating. You know, the, the enterprise is difficult enough, so in the fundamentals, Go for something that's, that's secure, that allows you to show your strengths without all the anxiety of, of, of uncertainty. Okay? Any questions about this? No. Is there anybody here definitely going to do it by publications? There is one of your number is, because he, he spoke to me yesterday. Right? There's nothing to stop you considering doing it this way, but if you've already made a, a start on the other route, you might want to continue with that. And of course, some supervisors will say, no, 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 I only do it by, by research. So you've got to accommodate each other as well. But if, if you're all doing it by research, try and get hold of one by publications as well, because it'll tell you something about the craft of doing a PhD. One of the things you can learn just by skimming something like that is a lesson in coherence, a lesson in, in, in constructing a narrative. Remember my mantra, an argument is a story. How do you get three or four disparate pieces of work to coalesce around a single idea, a single position, a hypothesis, a hunch, a contention? It'll tell you a lot about the craft of doing a PhD even if you don't want to do it that way. You never know when you're going to, where you're going to get a practical hint, where you're going to get a good idea, even, even how they link them, how they introduce them. You know, you're formally not required to do, a, to do a research framework, a theoretical framework, if you like, not formally required. I'd be fascinated to read them, just to see. So do have a look. You need to be ambitious about the literature and about the field. And something that's come up again in this morning's interactive session, um, one of the things you, can, you, you should do really early is, is if, you're in the, if you're in the throes of saying, well, I know my area, but I'm nowhere near a hypothesis, go to the journal, go, to, go and do a, a keyword search in, in journals. Find out what journals contain your keyword searches. So if, you're, if your subject concerns, as somebody's does, international law, autonomous weapons, international humanitarian law, find out journals that have all those key terms in them, alone or in combination. If it's, if it's supply chain logistics and road transport, or supply chain logistics and law, find out. There are have you ever done a, a, a search, just, just an alphabetical search of the number of journals there are in the world? You've already absorbed this. So you tend not to have whole subsections in articles saying these are the standard works. There's, there's something taken for granted. That's why you need a freestanding literature review. Does it contain a clear statement of the research hypothesis or the question of the problem? Okay. Now the, the, the challenge for you in, in making a hypothesis, it's one thing, as we've been discussing, to conceive the hypothesis as, as, a, as a single idea which you then pursue through a, a, a line, a, a linear chapter sequence. That's one thing. 
But imagine, imagine having to do four freestanding arms, which makes sense on their own. They have to be whole and complete on their own to, to get publication. Imagine conceiving four of them to cover a single hypothesis. It's not impossible. People do do it. I think that's actually quite difficult. It's hard enough to go from your general researcher, I want to do something about supply chain logistics. I want to do something about solid waste management in, in mega cities. I want to do something. That's hard enough. But it, with, within your, your, your chosen field of endeavor, to have a hypothesis and to break it up into four argumentative articles, each of which has a, has a completeness on its own, but which together accumulate into, into something that substantiates the hypothesis, that's a big creative act. And I wouldn't underestimate it. You see, they, they, if they're not complete in themselves, no editor is going to accept them. And given the difficulty that all of us, me too, that all of us experience in conceiving a hypothesis, imagine conceiving it in four parts or dividing it into four parts with presumably some overlaps. Conceptually, that's a big challenge. Uh, I would find it a big challenge. And because, because of our, our ideas about the, pre the precise wording of the hypothesis and how we're going to substantiate it, change, not only up into the, the, the research proposal in the first year, but sometimes even afterwards, Progressing these four articles can be quite difficult. Okay, is there a rationale? Well, there has to be. If you've got a hypothesis, then working through a rationale, getting to the bottom of that first triangle will give you the rationale. I've got faith that you can do that whichever path you take. Okay, is there a framework for how the various chapters contribute to the overall integrated argument of the thesis? Hmm, I'd find, it, I'd find it much easier to do it backwards. That is, to read four chapters and then say, well, here's the framework. To anticipate what you're going to learn and to conceive it in, in, in publishable form in fairly short order is a challenge. I think this is, this is really well suited to people who've got a track record already of publishing in the professional literature and or have a lot of professional experience and the data that goes with it on which to draw. But conceiving the whole, say, four articles or maybe even five in, as an integrated whole and then having some assurance that you're going to get them published as you've written them, it's a big step. Uh, I, as a PhD student myself, and I do remember in detail, mm, I'm not sure that I either have the conceptual ability at that time or the courage. I think it takes nerve to do it this way. I really do. Okay, and um, does that thesis have a specific hypothesis question problem? Yes, of course you will. If you've listened to me for three days, I guarantee you will, whatever your research path is going to be. You know, you know why a hypothesis is important. And the last one there, does it address a gap, a controversy, an undeveloped area? That's what a hypothesis is. So well, that's fine. But it goes on. There's more. You see the specificity of this and why it is I'm emphasizing that you, you, you look at the regulations governing your degree. It's all out there. You know, don't break somebody's heart, including my own, by asking me a question, the answer to which is already in the official documentation. Is the, is the, the thesis theoretically coherent and structured using the conceptual framework that underpinning as a whole? This is a, number seven is, a, is something of a warning shot. It's saying you can't just dump a lot of articles that are more or less in the field of solid waste management, uh, uh, supply chain logistics, uh, you know, human, human rights and refugees, whatever. It, they, they can't just be distant cousins. They actually have to link one to another to substantiate a hypothesis 
as in the example we've been using that is by dissertation in the same way that your, 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 your bottom triangle chapters have to substantiate a hypothesis. So this isn't, this isn't just a loose bag full of articles that, that, that are broadly related. They're looking for coherence. That's tough. Is the thesis able to stand alone as a publishable manuscript? Mm, uh, I'm not sure that I'd put that down. A lot of really very, very good PhD dissertations would make bad books. I know this because I, I run a book series. Uh, my series has 50 books in it now. So I, I've, I've been the general editor of a series for 50 books. And I get lots and lots of proposals from, from fresh PhD students who say, I want to publish my dissertation. The reason so many dissertations make bad <coughs> manuscripts, bad books, is because, because there's so much background in them, because there's so much what I call back covering. You know, the, the academic publishers are publishing for a professional audience. And so uh, it's a very unusual PhD dissertation that's publishable without a lot of alteration to make it a book. They're not the same kind of exercise. That said, three of my PhD students have published a dissertation. But it was, it was partly by dint of their writing style, partly by dint of the structure, and partly because they were just very, very good. So I, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on that. That's what they say. But if it's, if it's coherent and substantial, and there's a thesis, and you demonstrate the thesis, it'll pass. Okay. Uh, do the articles articulate with each other? Not the language I'd have used, but do they, do they connect with each other and together provide an original and substantial contribution to knowledge? And this, this again, puts a lot of emphasis on coherence. You know, if they're, if they're too overlapping, if they're too similar, you, you'll get into trouble. They're looking for, for something that's, that's substantive and, and directly linked to the others in reviewing this. Does the concluding chapter synthesize? In other words, you, you have to write a conclusion. It's not an article, a freestanding bit of writing. I would expect that normally to be about 8,000 words. Does it contain a comprehensive bibliography? Don't ever submit a dissertation without a bibliography. Of course, that's just... That's a requirement. That's easy. All right. And is it, is it satisfactory in literary style and presentation? I will preempt myself something I'm going to tell you again tomorrow. There is no such thing as academic prose. Please do not write what you think academics need to, 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 to see or what they need to write in. There is only good, bad, and indifferent prose. Tr honestly. I, when, I, when I pick up dissertations and, and, and read through it, the prose is really turgid, I think, oh no, I'm, I know you know this stuff. Why, why are you making it so complicated and difficult to understand? And once in a viva, I was the external examiner for a dissertation, and, and, and there was a key paragraph you know, that summed, summed up the, 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 the authors, I think it was the hypothesis or something. And I said, have a look on page 45. Will you read the bottom paragraph? And he said, okay. And I said, could you express that to me without looking at it in a really simple way? And he did. It's beautifully articulate. And I said, why didn't you write it like that? And he said, I thought I had to write academic prose. My heart sank. No, no. Part, part of the whole point of doing, it, of doing a dissertation, by either, by either method, is to find your voice. Your voice is legitimate. It needs to be backed with solid evidence. It needs to be backed with analytical acuity. But your voice matters. Your individuality matters. And after all, what I've been telling you for the last two or three days is that you have to be creative. That's what the hypothesis confection is. It's, it's creative. So please, please, your own voice, <laughs> clear prose. Find a prose style, find a book that you love. Find a book that's inspiring and learn from that. My inspiration book was written by a historian and I still haven't arrived. I'm still not as good as that. I'm not as simple as that. I go back and look at it occasionally and think, it's all muscle. It's all muscle and sinew and no fat. 
and it's not it's not tense it's not condensed it's beautiful the light shines through it and it's ever so simple and very powerful I still aspire and so you should aspire to okay difficulties uh, 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 uh. Outline difficulty. You're, you're, you're being asked to submit something for professional publication while you're still mastering the field. I mean, the thing about a, a dissertation by, by, uh, by research is that the test of it doesn't come until the end. But if you've got to write an article, say, you know, for, for purposes of timing and spacing, right at the, at the beginning of your second year, or a couple of months into your second year, you're up in competition with me. You're competing with, with old dinosaurs who've done this dozens of times before. And this, even as you're, you're still reading, 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 and trying, to, and, and, and trying to make sure that you've got your structure precisely solid. I mean, it should be, it sh by this time you should be through the research proposal. But even then, it still requires some adjustment sometimes afterwards. The question the research proposal committee is looking at is, is this person, do, do they know what a PhD is? Are they engaged in the work? And are they likely to complete? Not, is it perfect? But, you know, do, do they have enough acuity to be able to refine it? Here, you've got to produce something that's refined to a professional level fairly early on in the game and you've got to keep doing it. It's a challenge. You've got to conceive, next point, at least three articles which are distinct from one another and yet form a cohesive whole. And I've, I've already touched on that. That's, that's hard to think about while you're in the middle of your first year. It's hard enough to, to, to conceive that eight chapters, ten chapter structure that I've been taking you through, but to think of three articles which themselves have structural issues. How do I do this? How do I sequence it? That's tough. Then the third point, there's the lead time from article submission to publication. Uh, the worst I've ever had is a year. A year from submission to publication. Why does it take so long? Editors get, get busy, they're sometimes slack, and they often, the professional literature, will send it out to three reviewers, three external reviewers. So you will be up against professional scrutiny for each of these articles by three people, sometimes two, but the, 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 the industry average is now three. And they might come back and say all kinds of critical things. It's a terribly bizarre experience. You can get one who says, this is the best thing since sliced bread. And another who says, well, this is this is publishable but I would recommend some changes in A, B and C and the third will say this is terrible this is beyond the pale I've had that and, th and then the editor asks you to comment the editor will never, will never take an executive decision you, you've got to and then of course then there's another lead time and very very few academics prioritize the request to do research they don't pay anybody for this it's all goodwill so you think, yeah, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it, and you put it on the pile. And three months later, the editor will write to you, and you'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm mm, sorry, I'll, I'll do it. It can be a long time. And what this means, I'm not trying to be funny about it, what it means is that, is that your time management is extremely difficult. Because what happens if you wait five months or six months and the journal turns you down? It's a professional discourtesy, by the way, to send it to more than one journal. It, don't do that. Please don't ever do that. And, and by and large, the circle of reviewers is actually fairly small, and a reviewer is going to be incensed if, 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 if he or she is asked to review the same article for two different publications. So you, you can't do that. You've got, to, you've got to do one at a time. And it makes time management almost impossible. The best lead time I've ever had for an unsolicited article probably three, four months, something like that. And that's pretty unusual. Pretty unusual. Okay. Um, 
it's very unlikely that that if if you're being if you if you're going down the publications route that your supervisor uh, will will take you on for a subject that's that's vastly different from her own. In other words, what you might find is that what you have a passion for, where your your finest interest is, may get may get pushed over closer toward the professor's agenda. It's just it's just the way it is. I mean, they they have if if they're in, deeply engaged in a particular topic or a theme. And it's going to make it easier for them to help you get published. Then you might find that your own ideas begin to go a bit adrift, and that's not necessarily a problem. For some of us, you know, the word intellectual passion is practically a contradiction in terms. Okay, but you do have interest, and there are some aspects of this which fascinate you more than others. So you're likely to find, and this isn't this isn't a, a saying anything against supervisors who, 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 who do uh, dissertations by publication, you're, you're likely to find that your interests are going to at least parallel theirs, for good and for ill, or, or, good, or for good or ill. But I think that's a reasonable expectation. Or when there are more difficulties. I'm not depressing anyone, am I? <laughs> your articles had to be published in, in, in high quality journals of repute. Note this quote, it says, quote, while the candidate is free to submit articles in journals to, uh, to, uh, to, to the woes of his choice, all of these should be peer reviewed journals approved by the Department of Higher Education and Training list of accredited journals uh, for which the University Research Office will uh, award research in it. I, I, don't, I don't know how strict the criteria is. What I do know is that there are no shortage in the world of what I regard as predatory journals. There are companies that, that just generate as, uh, uh, journal titles by the dozens. It's a business for them. They don't care. I have been approached within the last year to be the editor of a journal of, what was it? Bioengineering, I think. Will you be the editor of, of, of our brand new journal, Bioengineering? Really? I, I, I failed dissecting a frog in high school biology. So, and that tells you a lot. It's actually, it's actually quite corrupt. And, and there are middle tier journals as well, which, which aren't first rate. In other words, I've, I've picked up journal articles. I've, I've, I've checked on people who've contacted me for help and things, and I look at their publications. And some of these, if they're peer reviewed, well, I have to say the, 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 the peers aren't peers of mine. Uh, I mean, some of them, they're, they're incoherent, there's bad spelling, they're even badly formatted. They're terribly unprofessional. They, you know what they're, they're, they're designed for, they're made for established, established but very weak academics who want to fill up their CVs. I've written 20 articles this year. Really? Anyone who's, who's had 20 articles published is probably not, is almost certainly not publishing in a high, a high quality journals or just doesn't sleep and is a monster. You can't, you can't do high quality work at that volume except by putting it out into fairly low quality outlets. So you've got to be very careful about this. So however scrupulous the, the, the filters are for the university, you yourself, for your own purposes, that is for your postdoctoral career, will want to make sure that, that you're in a high quality journal. Best and easiest way to find out whether it is, um, is, is to look at the publisher. You know, there are some standard uh, academic publishers, Kluwer, Elsevier, Palgrave, Oxford, Cambridge, all that sort of thing high quality and ask, ask your librarian because there are, there are world rankings as well or indeed ask the university research office. If in doubt, ask. You will do yourself an incredible disservice if as a PhD student going down this route you publish in a low, a low fi journal. I'm sure I could do 20 articles in a year if nobody was actually paying much attention to them. But what's the point? You know, if scholarship is the pursuit of the truth. Okay. 
and journals have their own culture, they have their own orientations. I mean, I've submitted uh, articles to journals where they come back and they say, actually, our, our, our emphasis has changed and we're no, longer, we're no longer interested in doing articles of a certain sort. I, uh, uh, we, we're no longer doing interventionist politics. You know, so I, 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 wrote, I you know, wrote a piece about a UN peacekeeping operation. They say, no, the, it, it's, it's, it's moved on, it's, it's a bit saturated. Uh, and, and so we recommend you find another. And it's not only that they have their own, their own orientations, but they also have cultures as well. If you read enough journal articles, you'll realize that the, the particular qualities of intellectual way, the nature of the arguments, the, um, the, w the way arguments are unfolded, how they're substantiated, how they're introduced, every single one has a, has a, has a different way. And it, it's not only a stylistic difference, it's actually a structural difference as well. Which is why professional authors, why, why established academics like me, I don't just write an article, I write an article for a publication. I, I choose my target first, so that I don't have to draft it six times. So I'll do it to conform, not only to the, to the formal conventions, you know, we use footnotes instead of endnotes and all that, that's easy, but to get a sense by reading enough previous articles of what kind of structure and presentation. And if you go down this route, you may have to find you've got to, you've got to do that kind of preparation for every single one with no guarantee that it's actually going to, going to, going to help you. The higher, you know, the, the better the publication, the more competition you've got. And your competition is me. You might win. You're welcome to try. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but yeah, but I, that's that's I know that's a bit mean spirited. The the point is everybody gets a first article in the literature, and when you do, you've beaten out the pros at least for that edition. You will succeed, but it's 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 a challenge. It is. And and. Um, Yeah, if, if, you, if, you, if you write the first article, you submit it, you get an acknowledgement, and then you're, you're waiting three months, you can't really be certain. You, 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 the overall coherence of the, the, the articles you've got planned is at risk. What happens if you can't find a home for it? What happens if it, if it gets rejected? You start the process all over again at the risk of, of falling six months behind on that, on that third or quarter of your dissertation. And, and if, if you can't get it published, how do, you, how do you adjust the article or reconceive it and resubmit it somewhere without upsetting your planned coherence? That is how they relate to one another. So it's, a, it's, it's likely to be a bit of a high wire act. That's why I don't want to do it. Writing's hard enough. Okay. There are pluses. There are advantages, you'll be pleased to hear. I think it'd be quite, it'd be a wonderful experience to, to work with a, 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 an established scholar on, on something that he or she knows, at, ve at the very least in parallel with them. The only, the only supervisors who will take on a student by publications I presume, are, are, are those who, who themselves are engaged in something that's at least close to that. And, and you get a kind of mentorship that an ordinary supervisory relationship might not give you. That is, you're actually learning how to write as you're learning how to, how to research. You know, I didn't publish anything while I was doing my dissertation, and I had to start right from square one and think, Okay, how do I do this? What kind of game is this? It was because I wasn't ambitious and didn't and didn't particularly uh, didn't want to particularly distract myself from what I was doing. But it was a whole other game, and I lost something because my my mentor was very very widely published. He was a he was a, an article writing machine, and I never got I never got tutelage from him on that. But he rated my ability to write. It is astonishing 
astonishing what's what's out there. Honestly, in, in fields you might suppose are very narrow, and increasingly these days, in the last couple of decades, the numbers devoted to commerce and business have boomed. Have boomed. And if you find one that seems close to your field, go and get the last five or ten years of the journals, open them up, and look at the titles, and see what's there. And that's a good place to start. Subject librarian, you know, can you, can you show me the shelves or the, the databases, because they're probably all electronic now, where, where all of the business or all of the commerce PhDs in the last five years were? and go through the shelf, or go through the alphabetical list. I, 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 I have to tell you, you have to keep revitalizing your hunger and your ambition. You know, every time you get stalled, go back to the library, or go access it electronically, and survey the field, because there's always something you haven't seen. And what you need is, is out there somewhere. So, so be, be ambitious. It's not hard. This gentleman and I remember the days when you had to run up and down stairways and go through dusty stacks, you know, dusty basements of libraries, looking for accession number 366.812. And now I go tap, tap, tap. It's so easy. Why would you be lazy when it's so easy? I mean, real, real ambition. You need, you, know, you, you need to be tearing the libraries apart, really. So do that. Okay? Now tomorrow, we're going to do the two sessions at once. We'll compress them. I don't know. Probably take us till about half past ten, something like that. And then with just enough of a break for tea, anybody who wants to do the interactive bit, who doesn't mind getting pushed around by me, doesn't mind being told, no, you can't be a consultant. No, you can't be a... You can't. <laughs> you can't be an advocate for social change, then you're, you are most welcome. You are most welcome. And, you know, if you just want to observe, I won't, I'll, I'll ask you if you have a question, but I won't embarrass you. If you just want to come up and, and have a look and see other people struggle, simply because you've got a sadistic turn of mind and like seeing people <laughs> suffer, that's okay. You can do that too. There's, there's room for the sadists. Okay, so 9 o'clock tomorrow, uh, two sessions at once, no session in the afternoon, and the interactive whenever you like. Have a nice evening. Don't forget to say, oh yes sir. Uh, sorry, just a quick, quick question. It's um, <coughs> regarding to the sources uh, that we use for literature, that the general articles and other various sources. Um, what's your advice on using these publications that are written for research or completed research? Um, I'm not certain I understand the question. Allow me to say uh, a PhD dissertation that's complete, that's been awarded a degree from this or any other university, is, is a public document. You can quote a PhD dissertation. Lots of dissertations do. It, it's fine, but that's not what you mean, is it? Um, it's, it's almost similar. But actually, I've, come, I've realized in my research area that uh, a lot of relevant information is coming from these publications that are written for research uh, or it's written completed research. Um, but if, well, here's, here's another possibility. I might have it wrong again, but it's worth saying. Um, if, if you're doing business and commerce and you, you pick up a, a report by a consultancy firm, you know, McKinsey or something like that, some of those are really very good indeed. And it's a, again, it's a public document. If the, if the data in it is useful, or indeed if even the judgments expressed are useful, and it helps to support the point that you're making, you're perfectly entitled to do that. You know, from government documents, any, any kind of public document is, is fair game. Now, look, the intellectual weight of it, the quality of the evidence in those papers, in those research papers, is a matter for you to judge. So you've got to be a bit careful. If you were doing a political subject and you picked up a study by an NGO, a non-governmental organization, let's say Oxfam, let's say. Well, Oxfam, they have a particular view. They have a mission. You know, it's not entirely objective. 
You know, they're, 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 they're terribly concerned about human development. If, they, if they're criticizing a certain, a certain actors, actions by government and they, they have evidence to back up that the criticism, that's all right, use that. Or use the sources. Perfectly all right. But I'm thinking of, if you had something that was very politically contentious, there are lots of think tanks which are essentially political in nature. You have them here, they're, they're all over Europe and North America. You've got to be very careful about the provenance of this, about their judgments. And that's, that's where you, you, you need to be a little bit discerning. Right? But, but in business and commerce, uh, say, uh, consultancy reports are there. Is that okay? Thank you. Just your judgment's worth something. And if you don't know who's publishing, you know, if I'm doing politics and I get a report by the Cato Institute, I think, mm, what's the Cato Institute for itself to help? These days with the web, I can call myself an institute. I can go back to my office and create the Whitman Institute. You know, it, it, and it's not worth anything, but it, it, it's on the web. I, so when, I, when I get a report like that, I think, okay, if the website doesn't say who we are and what we do, it's never been easier. Go into Google, Google and, and look it up. And if it says, well, it, it's, it's a right-wing thing tag and it's supported by a billionaire philanthropist and it, 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 its purpose is to, is to promote conservative ideas in government, you've got an idea of political bias and then you exercise your judgment. You know, in scholars from various universities, maybe five, six, or seven, who are writing on that, and then they say, "Who is it fair?" But it's not um, uh, the name of the like a journal or something like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Lots and sorry. Lots and lots of um, uh, university departments now uh, publish their internal papers. You know, they're, they're 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 often just seminar papers presented for for graduate students, say that kind of thing. And it's, it's, not, it's, not, um, it's not been published by a journal. It's perfectly legitimate if it's, if it's sound, if in your judgment it's sound. And, and you cite it. So it's, it's you know, the, the University of, of, of Berkeley uh, uh, paper series on, 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 on lo business logistics. You know, number, th number 34, uh, published July uh, 2017. Just cite it, you know, say where it comes from. But if in your judgment, and your judgment's worth something, this is a matter of substance, you're perfectly entitled to cite it. It doesn't need to have been published, or at least in the academic literature. There's more to literature than the academic literature, but you need to apply an academic standard to it. And you're all intellectuals, right? Please, please, please don't, don't become, don't suppose for a moment that you've, you've You've got to give up being an intellectual in order to be an academic. They're some of the saddest people I've ever met. I once met a man in a conference. He was only about 30, 32, something like that. And I said, well, you know, hello, and what are you working on? And he told me, he was very sort of narrow and very sort of focused, very obscure. And I said, that's interesting. And I said, what are you working on now? And he hemmed and hawed and I said, oh, yeah. I said, actually, I, I've, I've run out of things to write about. And I thought, you poor slob. When did you give up being an intellectual in order to be an academic? Aren't you interested in the world at all? I could, just amazing. Don't shut yourself down. Yes, of course, focus. Get, to, get your PhD, get your letters after your name. But you have, you have engagement and vivacity and in intellectual life outside academia, I hope. Don't lose it, please. All right, nine o'clock tomorrow. Is there? Did somebody just give you a register up there? Oh God, I'm I'm not I'm not going to win bureaucrat of the year again. <laughs> uh, on your way out, if you could sign that, they, for some reason they 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 want that stuff. So uh, thank you. I'll see you at nine tomorrow. Thank you.